TV, where we deliver you all the latest scoops of entertainment. We welcome our juicy fourth scoop of the week. In news that may stop you from drinking that next sip of your beer, that may make you consider changing your plans for the weekend. News that is so crucial to defining who we are as a society in today's day and age that you may even run naked through the street. It has been reported everywhere this week that Kate Middleton, in fact, wore mallow yellow on her last day in Canada. I'm excited that Gwyneth Paltrow makes it to our third scoop of the week. Now, just when we thought it couldn't have been a busier week in entertainment, we found out that Gwyneth has commented on canned cheese. The Hollywood foodie confessed to UK talk show host Jonathan Ross that she'd rather smoke crack than eat cheese from a can. Really, Gwenny? Her greatest gift is not cooking or acting or singing. I'd like to introduce my daughter, Liv. But seems to be annoying the hell out of people. I personally don't mind her, but if her dippy website goop doesn't piss you off, then apparently her Facebook page will. Paltrow was on the show to promote her new cookbook. But I gotta say, I ain't making sushi rolls every day for my kids' lunches. Paltrow's relationship with food is a little weird. It comes across kind of like an anxiety attack. Sometimes it's vegan, sometimes it's macrobotic, sometimes she's a cleanse practitioner. Still, she bangs on about the importance of eating as a family and then goes all Californian. P.S. How creepy is that clip we just showed? I don't know about you, but I don't have a romantic duet with my dad and confirm that this is not a one night stand. Oh baby, yeah. Number two this week goes to the fat girl that brought two train tickets to prove a point. Stephanie Payne was on the front page of Melbourne's commuter newspaper MX last week. The fatter than fat mother of four says she's sick of fellow commuters who abuse her for being too obese, so decided to prove a point and she decided to buy two tickets instead of one to cover her seat or, 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 or her seats. We don't know that many fat people here on Scoop, uh, but we do know an almost anorexic guy. So, we sent our kind of almost anorexic guy to the train station to see if they would let him buy half a ticket. It's, um, it's only fair, right? Hi, how are you going? Um, I weigh 59 kilos, so can I get half a ticket, please? And to our top scoop of the week. Harry Potter's latest movie, Deathly Hallows Part 2, has been released to Australian fans this week. Having said that, I did feel the urge to punch British actress Emma Watson, who plays Hermione Granger. She was apparently at the premiere in tears, paying tribute to the final flick on the red carpet. Nice frock though. But don't worry Harry Potter fans, even though I think the whole thing is bullshit, Nutty and Nath are here having a fabo time. And you can check them out chatting to die-hard fans, plus much more on tonight's show right here on Scoop TV. Coming up tonight on Scoop TV, Stacey asks the boys, would you let your child do this? Nate talks hottest albums of all time, Brad says the haters are hating phones, and in a Harry Potter special, we check out the premiere. You are watching Scoop TV and take our advice. Never make eye contact whilst eating a banana. Welcome back to the best way to spend your Friday night with myself and I. And we're also joined by regulars Brad Elliott and Nate Valvo. Hey. I love the way Stacey just admitted to our viewers that she's two-faced. 
There's yeah. two of you. There is. There's Don't many more sides to me. Mm -hmm. Isn't there? Yes. Do they all dress like stormtroopers? <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> I've never people. watched that. Sh I don't oh. watch that. We had a Star show. Trooper dancing at the end of our episode yeah. last week. Yeah, that was funny. And I don't do Harry Potter. I don't do any of that. You, on the other hand, do Harry Potter. I would do Harry Potter. Mm. Is that what would the question really? was? You went out and checked the premiere. Oh, sorry. Yes, we went out and we checked out the Harry Potter premiere, and uh, lots of virgins and nerds and losers having something to do for once. So that was exciting. <laughs> and haters are hating. Haters are hating relationships with your mobile phones. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. It mm. is a real tough It one. is. And also, while we're on the, the topic of weirdo Harry Potters, we, Nutty actually headed out to Belgrave to find the Belgrave wizard, oh. the king of the burbs. So we'll be showing that a little bit later. Does he get his wand out? Firstly, there are more weirdos out there than you probably know. And a lot of them parent children. How are we so sure they're weirdos? Over the past few months, more media platforms than ever have been reporting children's choice of hobbies as strange, unchildlike and just outright bloody dangerous. First Botox, now this. Hey guys! Hey guys! Hey guys! Wow. Would you guys let your four-year-old do that? You're um, never too young to ride anything. No. As my uncle used to say. Your uncle? Sick. But I do, I, I reckon that's a good thing to learn. No fear. Like, you know, get on there, mm. ride it. Mm. The kid doesn't know fear yet. Doesn't yep. know that if it falls off that, that's going to break its leg. Yep. It's going to hurt itself and bruise itself. Yep. And so it learns to yep. cope with no fear. Do you know it what really I mean? It really scares me that people like Brad can have children in this country and I yep. can't adopt. Doesn't that just freak the shit out of anybody up. watching? It is messed up. But with the uncle comment and the no fear element, I think both of you can get stuffed if you become parents in the next three, oh. five, ten, twenty years. Well, at least it's not playing Nintendo or sitting inside. Yeah. And when I was playing with my Barbie, Kimberly Jane, who was married to Ken, this child, young girl Jasmine, was doing this with her daddy. You might see him violet from the outside, but the, the, the gloves are so big, it's... Um, I said it before, it's equivalent to having a, a, a pillow fight, two eight-year-olds having a pillow fight on each hand. Yeah. I know I'm meant to laugh at that footage, but uh, the bottom line is she'd beat the shit out of me if I had a fight with her. She would win. <laughs> and me. She and would. you. <laughs> and Brad. Yeah. <laughs> you just won't admit it. Yeah, Not exactly. my forehead, though. Yeah. My forehead would win. So, okay, so four-year-olds are okay to ride sheeps in your book. What about this? Yeah, look, I think it's okay. Um, I, she's, she's learning something again. It's a sporty activity, and it's going to mm. protect her. Mm. And I think, you know, these days things are tougher out there. You've seen people egg houses and then stab people to death. And I think at least as a child, she's got a little bit of protection. Yeah. What were you doing at four years old with your yeah. dad? Do you not listen? I was playing with Barbie Kimberly Jane. Oh, we don't listen to your shit monologues, Stacey. No one does. It's just an intro, mate. <laughs> <laughs> monologues. <laughs> Okay, up next, we have Nate's review, can't wait, on popular radio station Triple J's hottest albums of all time. Hi, I'm a cowboy. Last week, Triple J revealed the hottest 100 Aussie albums of all time. Now, the list was compiled from an online vote from all the Triple J listeners, who, let's face it, are like star indie and cooler than me and definitely cooler than you. Good to see the Triple J listeners took time off working at their star indie cafes and stopped riding their star indie bikes and stopped getting their star indie tattoos and stopped eating their star indie tofu burgers to cast their votes. Here's my impression of a conversation with a Triple J listener. Hi, have you heard Britney's new song? I don't listen to Britney. I listen to Triple J. You're a douchebag. Now in case you missed the countdown, here it is. Get that? All right, we'll show it again. We'll do it properly now. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Question, do I find repeating this joke funny or am I pretending to find it funny just to fill in time? <laughs> now the top five Aussie albums of all time ended up being number five was In Excess's album Kick. 
coming in at number four with the Living End self-titled album. Coming in at number three was ACDC's Back in Black. Coming in at number two was Silverchair's album Frog Stomp. And getting the number one position was Powderfinger's Odyssey number five. Now, it was no surprise to me that the finger came in at number one spot. Uh, it was actually my number one pick. Uh, congratulations to you, Powderfinger, blah, 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 blah. But I instantly regretted my choice. Now that I know enough people voted for that album to get number one, I feel there were a few other albums that I should have voted for instead. Uh, don't you hate it when you end up regretting your vote ever being successful? Have a gawk, have a see, take a few photographs, I can understand. Now, there were a few albums that I'm surprised and quite frankly outraged that didn't make the list. Where was Kylie? Huh? Where was Nicky Webster's album? Huh? What about the Tin Lids? Remember them? They were a band made up of all Jimmy Barnes' Eurasian children. Uh, Triple J, where was Peter Coombe's album? What Australian aged 20 to 30 years old didn't own and love a Peter Coombs tape growing up? Newspaper Mama is pretty much the best song ever recorded. Where was Daryl Summers' album song lines? Ah, Daryl Summers. You singing Waltzing Matilda at the AFL Grand Final in the 80s is still one of the highlights in the history of Australian music. Once a jolly swagman camped by a billabong Under the shade of a cooler bar tree And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boil you come a waltzing Matilda with me Ah, <sighs> Daryl Summers. The only sound more annoying than your voice is that female, nasal, Aussie bogan voice that we hear often. Have a gawk, have a see, take a few photographs, I can understand. Anyway, if you want to see the full list of all the hottest 100 Aussie albums of all time, jump on the Triple J website and check it out. But a warning, you'll probably disagree with a lot of the results. I guess this list is yet another example of why you should always, always take your vote very seriously and avoid ending up with a result that makes you want to cry. Have a gawk, have a see, take a few photographs, I can understand. Bye!